Okay, enough already. I can hear you saying, you know, you just want to get on to making the map. Well, let's not waste any more time. To start making a map, we're going to click on this icon here, which is, needless to say, the new map icon. One click will do it. The system will ask us if we want to save any changes to the current work area. Well, in this case, we're going to say no. We don't really want to change anything with that welcome screen. Campaign Cartographer has what's called a new drawing wizard. This is a very easy way to get you up and running with a new map as quickly as possible. By default, you can select dungeons, overland maps, or symbol catalogues. We're wanting to create an overland map, so we're going to select that. You then have the option of having predefined templates, of which Campaign Cartographer has many, and decide settings myself. Because I really want to get into the nuts and bolts of Campaign Cartographer, we're going to use that selection, Decide Settings Myself, and then click Next. You then have the choice of creating a Campaign Cartographer 2 Standard Overland Map, or a Campaign Cartographer 3. This is really just more to do with the type of tools that will be available to you. We're going to use Campaign Cartographer 3, so click that, and then click Next. We're now asked for the map dimensions. We are going to create a pirate island. And so instead of these very large dimensions, which would uh, map you know, entire kingdoms and continents, we're going to reduce the size of our map down. We're going to focus on just one particular area. The width can be 300 miles, and the height can be 200. I'm not going to give it a map title at this time, but I am going to have my copyright notice. Copyright 2000, whoops and 8, Joseph Sweeney. These buttons here let us place very specific elements onto our default map area. I'm going to place a compass in the bottom left, so click on the bottom left button here and select a particular compass rose. I'm going to want one that looks quite nautical, so I'm going to use the first one, compass rose 1N, and click on OK. I also want a scale bar on the bottom right of the map, so I'm going to click the bottom right button and I'm going to select the scale bar and OK. Click Next. It's asking us if we would like a map background. I definitely do want a map background and I would like it dark water bitmap. You can actually change to any of the bitmaps which are in your system but dark water is the default and it's a pretty good one at that. For the moment we're not going to put a grid overlay on this map. The reason for that is we're going to put it in later. So all we need to do now is click Finish. Campaign Cartographer would now like us to save our map in a specific location. By default, Campaign Cartographer will often try and save your maps into the Program Files Campaign Cartographer 3 area. That's not really that good, so what I always make sure that I'm, I do is I go to My Documents, I make a folder in there called My Maps, which is where we just were, and then I We'll put all of my maps in there. Let's call this one, ooh, what's the good name for a pirate island? Let's call it Parrot Death Island. Yeah, that sounds good. There we go. As you can see, Campaign Cartographer has now created a lovely border for our map. It's also set the map boundaries to that border. That means that when we're drawing islands and coves and land masses, they won't scroll off the edge of the map. Campaign Cartographer has also placed the compass rows in the left corner here and the scale map and the scale bar here. Let's just use the zoom button to zoom into that scale bar. There we go. You can see that it's even used the right scaling, 0 to 20, km, uh, 20 miles. To see the whole map again, you click on the Zoom Extents button. There we go. OK, let's actually now start drawing our map. To do this, we're going to use this button here. This is a drawing tool which automates a great deal of the drawing process. There's two ways of using it. You can just left click and you will automatically be given all of the drawing tools. As you can see, what happened then is that we changed to the land sheet 
our color turned green, our layer turned to coast and sea, and we got the dark green landmass. If I was to now actually start drawing, I'm going to, to, to do this, I'm going to start by left clicking and then moving my mouse, left clicking again, 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 moving my mouse, left clicking, and to finish the landmass off, I simply right click. As you can see, that is now drawn for us a dark land mass, lovely dark color green, with a beautiful black border around it. And it's placed it on the land sheet and on the coast and sea layers. Very, very easy to do. I'm actually going to now delete that. So I'm going to click on the erase button here. And I'm going to draw a box around what I want to delete. And then right click and say do it. The reason that I've deleted that is I actually want a different type of landmass. I don't want to use the default for this particular map. But it's also useful to see that the defaults can give you a very good result quickly. Notice that when I delete it, it left this big white area here. That's because Campaign Cartographer does not by default redraw after every command. Things would just get too slow. To force a redraw, you can move your mouse over here and click on the redraw button. There we go. Let's come back over to the tool and see the second way of using the drawing tools. Instead of left clicking, I'm going to right click and up comes a menu with a whole range of different landmass options here. I'm going to choose the light landmass bitmap. You can now see that the sheet is set to land, the color is set to a lighter green. We're at the coast and sea layer, so all's good there. But notice this, the fill style is now light land light green bitmap. Perfect. Let's actually now draw our map. I want this to be a, a really sort of unusual island since it's a dead parrot island. Thank you to Monty Python there. And let's make it reminiscent of a parrot. There we go. I'm going to try and make this look a little parrot-like. There we go. So if you were a drunk pirate, this landmass might in fact look a little bit like a drunk parrot. There its head, there's its wings. Maybe. I'm going to show you something else really cool with Campaign Cartographer 3. Let's say that this island is not just sitting out on its own, and most islands don't, incidentally. They sit on volcanic ridges. So I'm going to draw some more islands, smaller islands, leading off this main one, as if there was a shelf. I'm just going to scroll my map down a little bit. What would happen, though, if I only wanted to have part of one of my land masses on the map. As you can see what I'm doing here is I'm clicking outside of the map boundaries and instead of it drawing the landmass over the edge of the map boundary it's just giving us the straight line here. I'm going to come in and finish them off. There we go. So we've got a bit of a map, a uh, bit of a, an island here which is dropping off the map. and We'll have put another little bit of an island here as well. There we go. And let's put an island in here. This would be a lovely little hideaway for the pirates to sail on in and find their, their top secret little cove. And we'll put a bit more of a, la a couple bit, a little bit more up here. There we go. So there's our main island, our parrot death island, and a couple of other little sister islands along the way. And just to, just to give us a bit more, there we go. As you can see, using the tools in this manner will not allow us to draw past the edge of the map. It locks everything in place for us, which is really, really handy.